and every one of you and I greet you all in the name of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to welcome all of you in the house of the Lord this morning and I want to invite you to stand with me as we look to the Lord in prayer as we worship him. Hallelujah. For those of you who are logging on from your homes, we welcome you and we encourage you, amen, to lay aside everything else and worship the Lord with us this morning. Hallelujah. I just want to read a portion of God's word before I look to the Lord in prayer the Bible says when we have a psalm bring it into the house of the Lord amen so I want to read from you from the book of Psalm Psalm 63 hallelujah the first eight verses it says O God thou art my God early will I seek thee my soul thirsted for thee my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water to see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen thee in thy sanctuary because thy loving kindness is better than life my lip shall praise thee thus will I bless thee will I live I will lift up my hands unto thy name my soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips hallelujah so we can have joyful lips amen praise the Lord when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches because thou has been my help 
Hallelujah. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul follow it hard after thee. Thy right hand, they uphold it me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God holds us in the palm of his hands. We just want to give the Lord some praise in his house. Hallelujah. Oh God, we lift our voice to you. We lift our hands. We lift our heart. Oh God, we come into your house this morning to worship you, to praise you, to elevate you, to glorify you. My soul thirsteth hard after thee this morning. My lips shall praise you. Thus will I bless you. Hallelujah. For great is the Lord and great to be praised in the city of our God in the mountain of his holiness beautiful for situation is the joy of the whole earth this morning we magnify your Lord worthy 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 is the Lord God hallelujah father we join with the angels and the seraphims and the cherubims and we cry unto you holy holy is the Lord God almighty this morning Father, we thank you for your presence in this place, oh God. We thank you for the promise of your word that said where the twos and the trees are gathered together. There you are in our midst. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Take over our service this morning. Take over our worship team. Glorify yourself through them this morning, oh God. Upon the musicians, upon the singers, oh God. Upon your congregation this morning, oh God. We will worship together, Lord, and we are trusting you for a corporate flow of your anointing in this place this morning. Anoint your servant as he ministers your word, oh God. Keep him under your umbrella of anointing this morning. As he stands, he will stand as an oracle of you, Lord, having the unction to function. Give us here and there to hear what the Spirit is saying unto us this morning as a people, oh God. We commit this day to you, Lord, the service to you, and we say, have your way. In the awesome name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel excited this morning. Amen. Excited to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. I hand right over to our team this morning. See me. Hallelujah. Hosanna in the highest this morning. Hallelujah. Let's sing it on to the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest, let our King be lifted up, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna,
worship you. Hallelujah. We're here to worship God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let our King be lifted high this morning. Hallelujah. The psalm was just pre- re- um, was just said this morning as we would worship God in spirit and in truth. Let us worship Him this morning. Offer up our lips of praise to God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's going to bring that time of refreshing this morning. Hallelujah. Prepare yourself for something new, for something great. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I thank you, Lord. 
crush and devour. I bring the power of darkness underneath my feet. For the Lord, for the Lord is my tower, and He gives me the power to tear down the world.
Jesus is that name this morning. That's the name we worship. That's the name we honor. That's the name we adore this morning. Jesus is his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As we get into the time of worship this morning, God says he will fight for us. Hallelujah. How long have we been trying to fight for ourselves? Now we have no more strength, but God says he's going to fight for us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are you asking God to fight for you for? Is it your healing? Is it deliverance? Is it a deeper walk with him? What do you want God to fight for you for? Hallelujah. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Step aside and give it to God. Lay it at the altar and let God fight for you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise your name, Jesus. God says he will fight. And I will fight for you. I will fight for you. By the power of my spirit, says the Lord. And I will fight for you. I will see you through. Of the storm you will prevail as we lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, my church, that you will never.
This is how I fight in my battles. This is how I fight in my battles. This is how I fight in my battles. This is how I. This is how I fight. This is how I fight in my battles. We fight. This is how I fight in my battles. Hallelujah. Falls and won't reveal. 
Well, God is a winner. I'm not backing down from every child. Cause I know, cause I know how this story is. There is power. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. That name is so powerful. Everyone he wins. for healing this morning hallelujah see your victory for salvation for your loved ones this morning victory i'm gonna see hallelujah for the battle belongs to you Put a 
Worshiping you this morning, glorifying your holy name, blessing your wonderful name, magnifying your holy name, thanking you, Jesus, thanking you, Lord, blessing you, Holy Spirit, magnifying your wonderful name, thanking you, Jesus, thanking you, Jesus, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that within me, bless His holy name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Say good morning to you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, we bless you, and we glorify your holy name. Clap your hands to the Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Hallelujah. It's good worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessing the Lord. Magnifying the name of Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, beloved. I choose to be glad in, the, in this day, beloved. Hallelujah. Have your seats, folks. But I have all of you here with us this morning in worshiping and praising Almighty God. Hallelujah. We thank God for each and every one of you that the Lord has brought you here this morning. And we thank God that we can worship the Lord in our giving. Amen. For the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Thanking you this morning, dear Lord that we can worship you in the beauty of holiness. And we thank you, dear Father, for your pouring of your anointing and the, and the power of the Holy Spirit upon us this morning. We thank you for this presence, dear Lord. There's a sweet presence of your Holy Spirit here this morning, dear Lord. And we thank you, you said, where the twos and the trees are gathered together 
In your name, there you are in the midst of us, dear Lord. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit. And we thank you, dear Lord, for touching us and blessing us. Uh, commit your people into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's worship the Lord as we give. Hallelujah. given to us life you have given to us health and you have brought us here into your house yes. dear Lord to worship you in the beauty of holiness we thank you dear father for this uh, opportunity to worship you dear Lord thank you Lord bless your people strengthen your people and supply their every need thank you father Lord for ministering unto them your salvation and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And I thank you, dear Lord. You have planted us in your house yes. and in your kingdom, dear Lord. Hallelujah. And Lord, we anticipate your return. We know, dear Lord, that you will come again. And we pray, dear Lord, that you would prepare us, your people, for your coming, dear Lord. Yes. Prepare us for the work that you have called us to so that we will be busy working for you, dear Lord. And we would prepare ourselves for your coming, dear Lord. I thank you, Father, Lord, for your blessing and your victory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Clap your hands for the Lord Jesus. Wonderful worship by our worship team. Amen. Wonderful worship. Every time they keep, bless, they keep blessing us with worship. And we are, we are truly, eternally grateful that God has blessed us here in Delight Road with a wonderful worship team. Hallelujah. Anointed. Amen. And we're happy that you all could be here this morning. We have visitors with us. And um, we have Felicia and Naomi. Uh, please stand. Don't think the camera will pick you up, so you, you're good to go. <laughs> Give them a clap, everybody. Sister Michelle, bring them. Hallelujah. Have your seats, folks. Praise the Lord. We're glad to have you all, folks. Amen. Hallelujah. We 
We want to get into God's Word this morning, and those of you who have your Bibles, we want to look at 2 Kings chapter 21. 2 Kings chapter 21, verse 18. Verse 18. 2 Kings 21, 18. <coughs> Title of the message is Bearing the Image of Christ. As believers, we are called to bear the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And let's look to the Lord in prayer as we get into God's word this morning. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, thanking you this morning for your blessings. And for your word, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The entrance of your word give us light. We thank you for the revelation of your word. We thank you for the understanding of your word. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit that is implanting your word in our hearts, dear Lord. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you, O Lord. Lord, you desire that we plant your word in our heart, dear Lord, that it may germinate and bring forth fruit in our lives, fruit of righteousness, holiness, godliness, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, faith, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, we can bear the image and likeness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I pray, dear Father, Lord, that this will be first and foremost in our heart, dear Lord. And I commit the word and your people into your hands. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen. In Second Kings 21, 18, and it says, And Manasseh, and Manasseh slept with his fathers, and was buried in the garden of his own house, in the garden of Uza, and Ammon, his son, reigned in his stead. Manasseh was the king of Israel, and he died. He was a, he was a wicked king, because in, in verse 2 of same chapter 21, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord after the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. So he was a wicked king in the land of Israel. And he caused Israel to sin against God by worshiping of idols. And here now his son succeeded him to the throne. And this is a son story, well, a summary of the son story. His name was Ammon. Verse 19, Ammon was 20 and 2 years old when he began to reign. He was 22 years old when he became a king. How would you like to become a king at 22 years old? Yeah. Well, we are already kings and priests in the kingdom of God. Yeah. Amen. And Ammon was 20 and 2 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 2 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Mehushilameh. Sounds like a medicine. The daughter of Haruz of Jotba. And he did that which was evil in the <coughs> sight of the Lord, as his father Manasseh did. So he followed in his father's footsteps. Sometimes children tend to follow in their father's footsteps. The spirit of the father is transferred upon the children. You see, beloved, there's a principle, and I don't want to go into any tangent here now. But whatever evil spirit you, whatever evil spirit you invite into your life, 
that evil spirit will stay with you until you die. And then it will, that evil spirit will jump on the members of the family. And so that when that evil spirit jump on members of the family, you'll find some members of the family doing the same thing. Replicate the habits and traits of the father. That is why we need godly fathers. We need godly fathers, beloved. So that the children will not behave as evil as their fathers, beloved. We need godly fathers. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his father Manasseh did. And he walked in all the way that his father walked in, and served the idols that his father served. And worship them. And he forsook the Lord God of his fathers. And walked not in the way of the Lord. He forsook the way of the Lord. You see beloved. Anytime you forsake the Lord. You step out in enemy's territory. And you are open target for the enemy, beloved. That is why you've got to stay under the protection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Once you stay under that protection, you're safe. The Lord will keep you safe. Now, Satan would not push you. But what he will do is that he will bait you and entice you. Come. 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 Look how much pleasure here. Come. You don't have to go to church every Sunday. You could go all, do all kind of things Sunday. Go beach. You could go hunting. You could go fishing. You could go all kind of things Sunday. You don't have come. Come. And when you reach here, you lick you up. You become open target. For the enemy. Yeah. So you have to be very careful. That's why the Bible says we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. Why? Because we have the wisdom of God in us. We have the Lord God with us to speak to us. He that hath an air, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. And you are the church. Verse 23, and the servants of Ammon conspired against him and slew the king in his own house. That is why he reigned only for two years. They kill him after two years, they kill him. Why? Because he encouraged the wickedness in the land of Israel and in his own home. That same evil conquered him. And cut short, of his, cut short his life. He was 22 years when he, bega when he became king. And he reigned two years in Israel. And he died at the age of 24. Very, very young. He could have had his whole life, a whole life full with God. And God would have secured him and God would have given him a good reign in Israel. But because he allowed the evil to come in into his life, the evil itself shortened his life. So it's a principle, beloved. If you invite evil into your home, if you invite evil into your life, that same evil will conquer you and cut short your life and will ruin your life. Do you want to be cut short at an early age? Do you want to die? How many of you here want to die? Put up your hand. No, we don't want to die as yet. But he's saying here, and, and, and the people of the land slew all them that conspired against King Ammon. And the people of the land made Josiah 
his son king in his stead. Now the rest of the acts of Ammon which he did are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah. And he was buried in his sepulchre in the garden of Uzzah and Josiah his son reigned in his stead. And Josiah was eight years old, verse chapter 22, verse 1. And Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. Imagine a young boy, eight years old, became king of Israel. To rule those who were elder than him. And he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. He reigned 31 years. He became a king and he was a king for 31 years. Longer than his father. And his mother's name was Jedida, The daughter of Adia. Of Boshka. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And walk in all the way of David his father. And turn not aside to the right hand nor to the left. And he did that which was right in the sight of God. That is why he reigned 31 years. God prolonged his reign, his kingship in Israel. And God gave him a good life in Israel. You see, beloved, if you want a good life, if you want things to work out for you, children, you want you to pass your exam, and, you, and, 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 and young people, you want to get jobs, and you want to have a good life, and you want to settle down, you want to have a steady income coming in so that you could get a good life, beloved, you need to stay with God because God is, have your future in His hands, beloved. Don't turn to the left, nor to the right, but walk in the way of the Lord. If a young boy, young ladies, if a young boy come whispering in your ear for this, that, and the other thing, say, mm -mm, no thing without ring. Tell them that flat. And plain as the airport. Tell them that. Young boy. You who are in school, if a young girl come and she want to entice you, say, mm -mm, no, sir, it's books before girls. And young girls tell them, books before boys. These are good advice, take it. So Israel... So in the reign of Ammon, Israel sinned against God by, by worshipping of idols. And in the worship of idols, the psalmist David described these idols. In Psalm 115. Go to Psalm 115. Read them from verse 1. In Psalm 115. Look what it says here. Now unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name, give glory. For thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens. He had done whatsoever he had pleased. Their idols are silver and gold. The work of men's hands. So he's describing the idols. And he says here, they are the work of men's hands. Whatever it, they may be made of, whether it be wood whether it be iron or whether it be gold or silver, or whether they be of mud, they are made with men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, 
but they see not. So the psalmist David, this is his description of idols. Verse 6, they have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusted in them. And he says here, and he gave an admonition. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. So, he's, so he says here, these idols, you worship in them thinking that they will help you. But they cannot even help themselves, much less help you. For they have hands and they cannot help you. They cannot stretch it forth to help you. They have eyes and they cannot look after you. They have mouths and they cannot admonish you. They have ears and they cannot hear your prayer. So what you are doing in worshiping of idols is that you are doing that in vain. And he said, those who worship them are just like them. Don't worry, I wouldn't say it. So he said, those that worship them are just like them. Cannot speak, I'll use that word. They cannot speak. And um, he says here, and the worshippers has become just like these idols. Now, when you worship these idols, this is what become of those that worship these idols. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of them who hold the truth in unrighteousness, meaning that these are the followers of idol worship. Because that, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God had showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, so that those who... Turn to worship idols. And those who turn to do evil and to live in evil. He says, you have become vain in your imaginations. So that by the practice of these evil, it warp and twists. Your mind. So that. You cannot think straight. You walk crooked. You walk bent. Why? Because your mind is warped. It is twist. And that there is no sound doctrine. That could enter. 
the vain mind unless the Holy Spirit plants it there. That is why you have parents speaking to their children, trying to get their children to do the right thing, and their children wouldn't hear. It's like stick breaking their ears. Simply because the words that you speak to them, it simply bonks off. Because your, their mind cannot retain sound doctrine. And therefore, you, we, that's why I said uh, a couple of Sundays ago, or whether it's Christmas messages, that we need a move of the Holy Spirit to plant it in our mind. And to break the fallow ground, the hard-hearted ground, so that the word of God can come in as Jesus gives us the, the parable of the sower and the seed. And he says here, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And so, so Satan puts a lie in their head that, listen boy, you smart enough. You smoke this, you get intelligent. And many people smoke that and they get, and they, instead of intelligent, they're gone out of their head. They get mad. They say, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And look at this. And this is what I want to bring to your attention. And change the glory of the Lord into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and for footed beasts and creeping things. So that the things that you see, the statues that you see, were once a picture in their minds. And they translate that picture into something tangible. That is why it was f those idols were formed like that because it was first birthed in the minds of the worshippers. And, and, he, and, and he says here, so that as they entertain these thoughts of evil and idol worship, they change themselves into that which they worship. So that the worshippers of these idols become just like these idols. So that the they change the glory of the human being. They change the form and fashion of a man. They change the form and fashion of a woman. So that the glory of the woman is no longer there. But the glory of the image is now there. So that the woman and the man lose their glory. When you look at a newborn babe, what do you see? What do you see? What is the first thing that comes out of your mouth? When you see a, a baby, innocent, perfect, I'm looking for one word, adorable, beautiful. Oh, look how beautiful this baby is. Look how beautiful he is. Look how beautiful she is. Why? Because what you are beholding there is the beauty of the human being. And if it's a male, the beauty of the maleness 
If it is a woman, the beauty of womanhood in that baby. And as that baby grows, becomes a young child, into a uh, teenage and a uh, adolescent and growing into womanhood and manhood, you see the beauty of the, of the, the maleness and the womanhood. You see the beauty in that because that is what God puts in his human being that he created in Adam. And therefore, man and woman is born with that beauty and glory, that shining, that shining glory. Baby is born with that and children grow up with that beauty. So that when you look at, at, at young children that are in the Lord, uh, and when you look at young children, you say, oh gosh, look, that thing happened to that nice boy. That thing happened to that nice young girl. How nice she was growing up. And that thing happened to that nice girl. Why? You will be holding the womanhood in the young woman and the manhood in the young man. So therefore, that, so that we were born with that beauty and that glory of God. We were born with that. And, and when we came to know Jesus Christ to be Lord and personal Savior, now we have to grow into the glory of Christ. Now we take on another glory. On top of our womanhood and manhood, we take on the glory of God in our life. The glory of Christ in our life. So that when you become an, a born again believer, you grow into that glory, beloved. He says here, wherefore, verse 24, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness, through the loss of their own hearts, to dishonor their bodies between themselves. You see, so when they partake, when a human being partake of evil and goes the way of evil, he dishonor that glory. And he change that innocent glory. And that is why you see people profiling one another. How he looking so? He looking like a gangster. How he looking so? He looking like a thief. So that the moment you walk in a supermarket or a department store, people profile you. Why? Because you take on a different glory. And when you take on a different glory, people see it. They notice it. How he looking so? Where, how he looking? Where, when you look at a vagrant who roam the streets, do you see any beauty there? No, because he has dishonored his body. He, he or she has dishonored their body, and therefore they have changed the glory of innocence into that which they have become. Because that is. The life in which they worship. The life in which a person take up to live. That has become their worship. Just as the same as we come here in the house of the Lord. And we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Outside there. People may not be doing that to the Lord Jesus Christ, but they will be doing that to the life that they take on upon themselves. So whatever life a person take on upon themselves and exclude God and forsake God, that they will bear that image and that likeness. And you become like that. 
And that's why we looked at somebody and said, how he looking so? How she looking so? But I know she when she was small. But look how she become. Oh gosh, what has happened to her? Because they dishonor their bodies and they change the glory of the Lord. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. You see what they did? And worship and serve the creature more than the creator. They serve the, those that are uh, 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 a vagrant out there in society. God help them. They have served the creature, which is this world, more than the creator who created this world. Who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So women no longer pursue that which belongs to womanhood. And likewise men. And likewise also, verse 27, the, ma the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is shameful and receiving in themselves that penalty of their error which was due unto them. That's the translation. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, they refused to retain God in their knowledge. You ever hear somebody say, boy, don't take God off your thoughts you know, and do that? You, know? you ever hear somebody tell you that? And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. A reprobate mind is a mind that is alien, that is far from God and doesn't want to hear about God and doesn't accept God and doesn't and refuse. A reprobate mind is where you're far gone that you refuse God in your thoughts. To do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity. Malignity means mischievous, being mischievous, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unforgiven, unmerciful. Implacable means unforgiven. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them so that they not only do not want to retain God in their thoughts, but they find pleasure in their evil. So he says here, these are those that change the glory of the Lord. And the thing about it is, beloved, this uh, um, Paul, in this little admonition here, he picked up this revelation from Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 11, so that in Paul writing to the Romans, he made, he made, in his letter to the Romans, he made reference to Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 11. In Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 11, look what the scripture says. He says here, 
Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. So that when Israel went after to serve idols and to become idol worshippers, they changed the glory of God for that which does not profit them. But, for, but, but that has become a lesson to us New Testament believers. In that the scripture tells us, beloved, in John chapter 14 verse 8. Here we have a, a discourse, a discussion. Jesus was teaching his disciples. And in verse 8, chapter 14, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us, it will satisfy us. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and you, and you have not known me, Philip? He that had seen me had seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? So that, Philip said unto Jesus, Well, Master, show us the Father. And Jesus looked at Philip and said, Philip, so long time I've been with you. Don't, you. don't you know the Father? Because if you see me, you see the Father. Why? Because Jesus is the express image of the Father. How Jesus behaved, his attitude and how he operated, and how he loved the people. It was just the same as God doing that if he himself were on the face of the earth. So that is why Jesus became the express image of the Father beloved. So that in Romans chapter 8 tells us, Romans chapter 8 verse 29 tells us. Romans 8 29. Go there. For whom he did foreknow, meaning us, he also did predestinate to be conformed, to be just like to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So that God had predestinated us believers to be conformed, to be just like Jesus Christ. That is why we sing the song, to be like Jesus. That's all we want, to be like Jesus. Moreover, whom he did predestinate them, he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. So we are glorified in Christ Jesus. We bear the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. So that as long as you serve the Lord, you will bear the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, as you, and therefore when God looks at you, he sees Christ in you. Just as the children, just as the un, uh, uh, anti, uh, do, just as those of Antioch. They saw the, the believers and they saw the disciples casting out devils and healing the sick, preaching the gospel and taking care of the poor and the needy. And they called the believers in Antioch Christians. And that's where the name came from. Christians, beloved. So that they were just like Jesus Christ. Christians means Christ likeness, beloved. And so that if we carry the title of Christian, 
means to say that we are the ones that are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Furthermore, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness, smartness, cunningness. Nor handling the word of God deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them. That are lost, beloved. So you see, beloved, he says here, in verse 4, in whom the God of this world, thank you, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine in them. So that at Christ, as Christ bear the image of God the Father, He requires us, His children, to bear His image, beloved. So that we can be just like Jesus Christ. In righteousness, holiness, and godliness, beloved. That is why in the book of Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. Look what the scripture says here. God who at sundry times and in divers manners. Speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Hath in these last days spoke unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So that Jesus is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. That is why we have to be like Jesus Christ. Go to Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. And we'll close right here. Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. Let's read from verse 8. It says here, But now you also put off all these. He said, Put off all these. Get rid of all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. He said, In other words, lie not one to another. Seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, which is evil deeds. He said, get rid of the old man and his evil deeds. And have put on the new man. He said, now put on the new man, which is created, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. 
So he says here, put on the new man, which is in the image of Christ. So that we can bear the image of Jesus Christ. So that when God sees us, he sees Christ in us, beloved. The hope of glory. That is why, beloved, Peter said, Let it be the hidden man. In Peter, yes. In Pete, in First Peter chapter three, verse one, we'll close with this. First Peter chapter three, verse one. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, that they also may without the word be won by the conversation. Of the wives. So wives he said that you can win your husband. If you will be a wife unto your husband. Not a mother. He already had a mother. He needs a wife. While they behold your chaste conversation. Coupled with fear. Who's adorning. Who's dressing. Let it not be that outward adorning of plating of the hair and of wearing of gold and of putting on of apparel. He said, listen, your outward appearance will not win him. It will only impress him. But it will not win him. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. The key word there is <laughs> Thank you for following. Which is, the, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Not saying that you should go so far. That was their culture there. But in our culture, it's honey, babes, and sweets. That's our culture today. So it is not the illuminous and fluorescent paint that you paint your face. Yeah, when you're walking in the night, you don't need those reflectors on those coverall and reflecting vests and so on. You just walk with your eyes wide open and everybody will see you because of the luminous paint that you paint on. So folks, we are called to bear the image and likeness of Jesus Christ in our attitude, in our behavior, and in our spirit. It is here in our spirit we bear the resemblance of Jesus Christ. It is here. Not the outside. But once you bear it here. It will flourish. On the outside beloved. That is why. There are some people who are unsaved. The moment you stepped in into their store. Into their establishment. And you start to move. They say, you are Christian. How are you moving so? Because walking, working in this store here, I just see all kind of behavior in this store. People just want to, mm, 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 mm. 
But you quiet and you decent and you peaceful and you and you minding your own business and you doing your own thing. You something different about you, you know. Yeah. You see, beloved, once you have it here, it will be on the outside, beloved. And guess who does see you here? Guess who does see you most of the time here? Those in your own home. So that before you can show, before you could put on Christ when you step out your home, keep on Christ in your home. Because some of us, when we reach home, we take out Christ. And we let them have it. And when we decide to come to church, we put on Christ. Morning. Morning, Amory. Morning, Jim. No, folks. That's hypocrisy. Let's not do that. Delay Road. Let's keep on Christ at all times. Let's stand for prayer. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Thanking you this morning, dear Father, Lord, for your bountiful blessings and your goodness upon our life, dear Father. Touch your people, strengthen your people. Those of you online, you say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Then pray this prayer with me this morning. Folks, let us help those. You said, those of you who are here this morning and you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, And you want to surrender your life to Jesus. That price may shine out from you. You come to the altar. And we'll pray with you. Come to the altar. Those of you who need prayer, you come to the altar. And let's pray with you this tonight, this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come to the altar. Those of you who need Jesus in your life, those of you who need prayer, you come. pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, save me. Give me, Lord, the gift of eternal life. And I thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Make me your child. Forgive me, Lord, of all my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness and I thank you Jesus for saving me and making me your child in Jesus name Amen and Amen Father we thank you dear Lord for your bountiful blessings upon your people strengthen them bless them do your great and mighty work in their lives. Thank you, Lord, for touching them. 
Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, for Brother Kenyon. Bring a healing upon him. I declare by the stripes of Jesus, he is healed in these eyes. In the name of Jesus. I release the anointing right now. Eyes be healed. And receive perfect sight in the name of Jesus. Touch him. Strengthen him. Bless him. Now thank you, Jesus, for your healing upon him. From the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, I release the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit upon him right now. Bring a restoration of health and healing in his body. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would touch your people. Bless them, their Father, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that they would take, take heed to the word of Almighty God. The word of the Lord shapes us into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. So that thy word have I hid in my heart, dear Lord. That is molding me and shaping me to be like Jesus Christ, dear Lord. Touch them. Strengthen them. And I pray, dear Lord, that there will be a consistency in, and faithfulness in serving you, dear Lord. Not stop and go, Lord. Stop and go, Lord. But there will be a consistency in serving you. And then the blessing of the Lord will be poured out, dear Father, Lord. Touch your people. Now, thank you, Lord, for those who are sick in the body of Christ. Bring a healing upon their life. We send forth your word of healing and we declare by the stripes of Jesus. They are healed, delivered, and set free. I commit them all into your hands. And I thank you for the victory and your blessings. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Have your seats, folks. K is coming at this time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We thank God for that powerful word this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. We are to bear the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. These are the announcements. On Tuesday, we continue with our intercessory prayer group. We meet here every Tuesday at 9 a.m. in the morning. So those of you at home, we welcome you to come and join us right here for a time of intercessory prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. We also meet on Friday night at 7 p.m. for a time of worship, the word, and warfare prayer as well. Amen. Where we have members of our church who would intercede and stand in the gap for our nation, for our church, for our loved ones. So we encourage you to come out and be a part of our Friday night prayer service. Hallelujah. 
as of February the 2nd, which is the first Wednesday in the month, we will be resuming our Wednesday evening service, all right? The four, the the, the D service will be structured in, in the following. The first Wednesday of the month, which will be Friday the second, um, Wednesday the second, we'll be meeting in church to study the word of God. So it will be a Bible study on the first Wednesday of the month. The second Wednesday, um, we will the men will be meeting in church for men ministry, all our men and our young men. That will be your time to have your sessions on the third wednesday the ladies and the young ladies will meet for women's ministry and the fourth wednesday would be youth ministry all right so each wednesday um we will have services but this will be the structure of it so it will be bible study men's ministry women's ministry and followed by youth ministry so all our youths and and the young ones, that will be your time to come out and, and be ministered to and minister to one another. Amen. So God bless you all as we be dismissed. I pronounce the blessings of God upon you. You are blessed in your going out. You are blessed in your coming in. Amen. Whatsoever you put your hands to shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Because the word of God says the blessings of Abraham will follow us. Amen. And we are the offspring of Abraham. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand as our pastor will dismiss us and make the final announcement. Thank you all for joining us online. God bless you.